This podcast is sponsored by Aleppo Restaurant on Wonderland Road North and Abe Miller George Funeral Home, where every life is celebrated, and their sister company, Cremation London and Middlesex, both family-owned and operated. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you may be listening. We welcome you back to another edition of the Vickers Crossing podcast, a virtual space where faith meets the public square. We're back, baby. We're back. We've been away for a while. We have indeed. But we are back. A little summer break. Yeah. My name is Rob Henderson, and I'm the uh, rector and priest at Holy Trinity St. Stephen's Anglican Church in London, and back with Kevin. I am Kevin George, uh, rector of, uh, I believe we're called incumbents now. We've had a change in our synod, but I am Uh. the incumbent at uh, St. Aidan's Church in the northwest corner of London. And uh, God, it's good to be back with uh, all of you guys. Yeah, we've taken a little break because we had a little vacation time and a little downtime, so uh, yeah. so it's good to do we that. We even and, found Ian. And we found Ian. We found Ian in the depths of camp, and we pulled him out for a little while. Yeah, wow, holy cow. Welcome back, Ian. How are you doing? I'm right. It's very warm today, and I'm sweaty. So It is. Okay. It's the hottest day of the year so far. Apparently. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And we should point out to the newly inked producer, Ian. Yes, that's right. He's got an yeah. incredible oh, tattoo on his tat. arm now. Yeah. Thank you. We've got to get a picture of that. We have yeah. to put it on We our... will uh, tweet to the world uh, the tattoo of Ian. Well, well, let's not get too far ahead on that because no. there's an asking anything coming up. That's right. We'll do that coming up in just a yeah. minute. Hey, want to say hello to uh, a couple of our uh, great sponsors. Um, um, before we get to that, though, want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Crossings. Uh, pub and eatery on Hyde Park Road in London. You know, we've been there for about a year, yeah. and we really got the whole podcast started at Crossings up in the upper room, as we like yeah. to call it. Yeah. And uh, so, after a year, we're we're going to be um, spending a little less time there. We'll be there, I hope, once in a wings. while. But we're going to give ourselves an opportunity to get out and be at a few other pubs and places in and around the London area. Uh, we find ourselves today at uh, Union. Um, here in in Lambeth, yeah, in beautiful, beautiful downtown Lambeth. And for those who are in the area, it's formerly a Crossings location, right. but now a Union Pub uh, Company. It's right, and they've just opened within the last week or so. Yeah, so, fantastic. Yeah, spot. we're glad to be able to come out here today, and uh, and are thankful to Crossings too for for the opportunity to be with them for a while. Yeah. Um, also, want to uh, say hello to our friends at Aleppo Restaurant at six six six. Uh, Wonderland Road it's in address, London, isn't it? and six 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 Wonderland Road. Yeah. Great place uh, to drop by and get some uh, food, and they've been a great sponsor to us over the last little while. And we want to welcome in a uh, new sponsor to the Vickers Crossing podcast, um, A. Miller George Funeral Home on Rideout Street here in London, where each life is celebrated. And of course, their sister company, Cremation London and Middlesex. Both family owned and operated, and uh, glad they're aboard too. So. Many thanks to yeah. Dave Mullen. This is, uh, let me just say, this is deadly. <laughs> I was waiting for something. <laughs> I had a whole list. <laughs> you had to jump in on it first. We have a killer sponsor, folks. That's right. No, yeah. we're glad Dave and the gang and the, and the good folks over there are with us, and uh, we'll be uh, uh, hearing more about them as we go as well. So yeah, that's good. good people. And uh, we're, good. we've been fortunate to have good sponsors all along the way. And all right. And uh, thanks to, to uh, here at Union to uh, Stephen and Christian, the owner, for sending in these nice, tall, 23-ounce cold beverages on this hot day. Right. And uh, we're really glad uh, to kick off um, our, our podcast today with a very special guest that we brought in uh, from Toronto. And we've got a big formal introduction coming up, Michael. <laughs> You can see Kevin's been up writing this all night. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So uh, Less formal than you yeah, think. We're, we're glad to have Michael Corrin with us on the podcast. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Good to it see you. It, it is hot. It is hot in here, yeah. Um, so we'll be checking in with Michael in just a minute. Um, first, we want to check in and see what's going on in our parishes, as we always like to do. Yeah, it's been a busy time, eh? Like, since we've been together, so much has happened in the church. Uh, we had General Synod just uh, <laughs> yes, just a did. little over a week ago. And uh, for those of you who follow Anglican World, uh, that's been a, a bit of a situation in terms of uh, equal, uh, married, finding, trying to find marriage equality in the church and a failure of emotion, but the uh, success of emotion to acknowledge bishops to be able to interpret the marriage canon the way they see fit and uh, I'm thankful to say we're just a couple days removed from our own bishop now Archbishop uh, Linda Nichols uh, offering the opportunity for us to welcome gays and lesbians into the sacrament of marriage uh, here in uh, Huron so pretty excited about that well that's been the big story and uh, if anybody said it was born in the church it's not boring not born this week and of course the news that she was elected prime right, right which is yeah. a big news in oh, it is co- big news and and we here in Huron are celebrating that and uh, 
mm -hmm. and uh, you know mixed feelings. It's always sure. difficult to have yeah. to say goodbye to someone, but yeah. uh, but uh, we'll we're happy our for her and for the church. To her. Yeah. yeah, no, it's very good. Um, Ian, what's been going on with with you and your life? Um, other than camp, other than camp, uh, I released an album. I did. Yes, yeah, so you did, did release, release an album. album. Released yeah. a musician for yeah. those that maybe turned in for the first time. Fantastic musician. Mm -hmm. How can we get a hold of this album? Um, so there will be a link in the description of this podcast. Um, I'm busy at camp, but I'm trying to work on like getting it up on on like iTunes and, and Spotify and things like that. But obviously, I'm at camp, so I won't be doing that as quick. However, yeah. So there'll be a link. Well, I bought the yeah. album. I bought the and album. I enjoyed the album. Yeah, yeah, it was very good. Yeah, I got it at a premium. Good work. Did you? Yeah, it's excellent music. I excellent. love it. No, it is. It's we love good. Ian. No, we're happy for you. Thank you. Um, so why don't we get into our uh, one of the best segments on our podcast? Of one course. of the best it's, it's ever. It's time once again, Kevin, for Ask Ian yeah, 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 yeah. Anything. 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 That's a pretty wild <laughs> sound you have there, Rob. <laughs> well, you know, that's incredible. <laughs> you go with your gifts. So we have a very important question for Ian today. Okay. Uh, this question comes uh, via uh, one of the uh, young uh, people who uh, follow our podcast. Saw a picture of Ian's tat, mm. and uh, was uh, quite uh, concerned to hear what that was all about. Uh, what motivates you to get a tattoo? Mm -hmm. Well, what does the tattoo mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, are you intending on getting another? That's pretty much three questions, mm -hmm. but you three can answer questions. you can answer one of them, all of them, or none of them. Um, so there'll probably be like a photo somewhere on Twitter or whatever. But it's a it's a triskelion. It's an old old Celtic Irish symbol. Anyway, um, I know it from the TV show Merlin um, that I watched with my family, which like reminds me of them. And um, it represents sort of that sort of naivety of watching that TV show and not worrying about like everything I'm worrying about now. Um, and then it represents uh, the past, present, and the future, the actual symbol, and then the mind, body, and soul as well. And then there's three spirals on it. So one for me and then two for my brothers or two for my parents. And then also I can tell kids I'm a wizard because that's what it was in the TV show. Ah, <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> um, and I, I don't know. I knew, I knew that I would get the symbol on my arm because when I was like 14, I kept drawing it on like my notebooks instead of doing math homework and um, I don't know, other places. So I knew that I would get the symbol. I don't know about getting another one. Um, not for a while at least. It'll be... It'll be a while until I get another one, but that's a possibility. It might right. happen. They do say that one leads to another, so wow. who knows? Yeah. That sort of inquisitiveness sort of leads us to think about in, in, inquisitiveness. <laughs> it leads us to think about questions, and yeah, mm. Ian's often asked, often asking us questions on this podcast. He is. Of course, and I am. As a matter of fact, are you ready to ask us some more questions? I am ready because, to ask yeah, you because we want to play another round of mm. trivial priest. Yeah, the trivial p priest. The trivial priest for the Canon Tavish Cup. Yeah. Are you guys Cannon ready? Canon Tavish was a very bright guy. I and hope more. you guys are ready. Yeah. So. What are we up to? What year? So we're on year uh, 1985. Okay. It's been a while. Yeah. So the basis of this game, right now, I believe Rob is up three to two. Three to two. Rob's in the lead. Right. Yeah. And our esteemed guest. Um, which oh, me? Will, yes, oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. You've been anointed esteemed. <laughs> really, really hear that word. No, he, never said, he never said you're esteemed. <laughs> esteemed. We haven't gotten into the questions yet. He's not quite right. esteemed yet, although it is steamy in here. Anyway, so our esteemed guest will choose a category for each of our priests here. Um, so would you like to do that now? They're from the trivia 40th anniversary. Can remind them the can, I, can I give you a, a Trivial Pursuit anecdote very quickly? Oh, yes, please. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a bit of name dropping, but bear with me. Yeah. Yeah. This goes back 35 years. And well, I was playing Trivial Pursuit yeah. with a bunch of people. And the, you know Derek Jacobi, the actor? Mm -hmm. Derek Jacobi? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's now Sir Derek Jacobi. He was part of this group. And the question, one of the questions was, Name the actor who played Claudius in the series I, Claudius. And he was sitting there. <laughs> and he just, oh, <laughs> ah, yeah, Anyway, that's my story. Yeah. That's very good. That's good. About that's ten good. of us and uh, my, my, my brief, vicarious claim. That's very thing. good. So I've got to think of, uh, well, I mean, the, the, the hard one's a science and nature one, isn't it? But yeah. let's be gentle. Yeah. Uh, my, you, uh, my area, uh, history. 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 For, 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 you got to pick for who, me or Kevin? You. Kevin, you. Kevin's history. history. I get history. And what, what about Rob? 
arts and literature. Mm. Okay. Mm. I'm trying to remember them off the top of my head. That's, yeah. that's good. Yeah. 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 That's 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 history, right. entertainment, sports and nature. So since Rob is in the lead, I will ask Kevin first. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Seems like I always get asked first because I'm always not in the lead. <laughs> what two-lane road from Chicago to L.A. at 2,000 two, yes, two mile avenue to get your kicks on was decommissioned as, highway, as a highway this year in 1985? I should know. Um, and I don't get the answer yet, right? Right. I gotta wait. I gotta, it's a song. I, I got a song running yeah. in my head. Yeah. Is this history? Yeah, yeah it's what it's 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 history. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So what is this? Anyway. So what's my question? <clears throat> what? Hold on. Hold on. It's You're pink, on. right? Um, it is pink. Arts and literature is pink. No, it's uh, purple. Oh, okay. I was about to ask the wrong question then. Yeah. Arts and literature, purple. What comic book publisher celebrated its 50th anniversary by releasing Crisis on Infinite Earths, tidying up many backstories? Ha. You gotta be kidding <laughs> me. Gotta be two. You got one of two to choose from. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So well, do I answer I'll let you, first? I'll let so you okay. uh, bumble your way through I feel yours, like I know this. I, I feel like I don't I know this, but I'm 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 drawing a blank and so um, do you want me to I you? would guess can I, can I? Yeah, you can guess because well, it's I, sure. I, I guess Highway 64. That, that's Highway 66. 66. Mm. Isn't it? Route 66. Yeah. Route 66? The answer is Route 66. Route 66. But Michael, well, Michael, Michael gets it right now. And the now. comic? Is that Marvel? I, I was gonna. I, that was the first one that went into my head. So yeah. Marvel, I would. I would right. say. The answer is DC. DC. Ah, there are only two. All right, oh, stupid questions. It we tied it up. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. No, we didn't tie it up. It's still three to two. I didn't get it right. I said he got sixty-six. I didn't get it right. You oh, said okay. like what? Sixty-six. You said 60, sixty-four. Didn't you? I said oh. sixty-four. There's a part of that route. Um, I I spoke there years ago in New Mexico, Gallup, Gallup, New Mexico. Yeah. I think that's on that route. No, oh, could be. And I think there are, there are people who do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. And, have, and I stayed in a hotel. I used to be with the, where, they, where they filmed westerns. Okay. And um, in this hotel where I stayed, there's lovely people down there. It's right by the, the Navajo Nation. And it goes across into Arizona. And uh, Errol Flynn had stayed there. Oh, and wow. Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Before he was president. Yeah. And of course, it'd be in the desert in New Mexico, making a movie, nothing to do. Can you imagine Errol Flynn with time yeah, on his hands? Yeah. Yeah. So I get all his buddies to come in from Hollywood, and the things that went on, I just went to sleep, but uh, it must have been amazing. Yeah. How thick were the walls? Could you tell well, what was yeah. going on? That was the question. But, uh, yeah, and that's good. Okay, well, we'll get back at it again. Hey, Kevin, do you want to introduce our guest uh, formally yeah, now? Le less Please. formal than you might think, but yeah. uh, I will say a word or two to welcome Michael to uh, the Vickers Crossing. Um, Michael is known uh, across this country anyway, and certainly beyond, um, but known as a, uh, an author, a columnist. Uh, he writes now with, you'll see him in iPolitics and McLean's Magazine. and Toronto Star, Star Globe, Globe and Star, Mail. Globe and Mail. You'll, a great piece in the Globe and Mail this week, by the way, sir. Um, his, uh, I think this is your last book, your latest book. Yeah, I've got another one coming out another in October, coming out. but that's, uh, that was three his, years ago. I think. His yeah. latest book was called Epiphany. I actually read it on a, on a plane on a trip uh, we took uh, to San Antonio, and I thought, ah, oh, Michael Korn, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> the book is called Epiphany, A Christian's Change of Heart and Mind Over Same-Sex Marriage. Um, very relevant given what the church has been going through now three years after the writing of this book but certainly it's a very per personal memoir i think of in my mind of your own journey on this issue um you've been very outspoken and a great ally to uh, the lgbtq2s plus community um, and uh, you've uh, certainly made quite a journey yourself having been formerly found on sun news channel with a program and on huntley street and all those places well, yeah, uh, well, CTS, which was CTS. the station that, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. For, I was there for 13 years. Yeah. yeah. And they won't uh, have me on now. They won't have, they won't have me now. in the building. <laughs> so it's quite a change, quite a change you've made. And um, I just remember my own introduction to Michael Corm was two things, uh, two anecdotes. One of them is my wife, Catherine Ann, works for the Roman Catholic Church, and she actually was at an event you spoke at probably the last time you came to speak here in London. Oh. It was a, a, something they'd organized, I think, through a diocesan 
youth group or something. It was like a pub night or something. Oh, like uh, Theology on Tap. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that was packed. Yeah. That was a, it was jam-packed. Yeah. It was out at uh, Bernie's in Byron, actually. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Catherine Ann came back, and she said, oh, my God, this guy, what he's talking about, this stuff, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and the other one was, of course, in the early days of me being on Twitter, I remember having a couple of exchanges because Michael's very active on Twitter, uh, where, you know, I was in disagreement with some of the stuff Michael was saying, and we were back and forth. And then I found myself with Michael having reached out to me a couple months ago um, about if I'm ever in Toronto, and I jumped on a train and went up there, and we had lunch <laughs> together. And I just, I'm, I'm really glad to get to know you, Michael, because clearly you're a great guy. You're a great testament uh, to faith. And you're you don't know me that well, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps, but I do know that you're prepared to actually engage in the conversation and the questions. And when we're prepared to engage in the questions, that's always an important thing. So Thank I, you. I'm just very pleased to get to know you and to welcome you here to uh, London, and we're excited for tonight. We have Michael speaking tonight at uh, Holy Trinity St. Stephen's over at your place. Yeah, it's, so um, it'll, the, the event will be over by the time people hear this, yeah, but we hope uh, we're happy to have well. you at the, at the parish tonight at 7 o'clock, and we've got a good group to come and, and listen and share some stories and ask questions and, and things and engage. If I might ask, yeah. well, I think it's a very important question, is it air-conditioned? Yes. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting in a in an air-conditioned room at Union. We must say to people that Union is quite cool out in the main restaurant. Yeah. We're in a room which has not a lot of uh, vents for the air conditioning, so it's not quite as cool as the rest of the restaurants. And so. it's 40 degrees outside. And it is hella hot. <laughs> as, as my friend producer Ian day. says, it's hella hot. Hella hot. It's hella yeah, hot yeah, outside. Right. Anyway, Michael, we're just glad you're here with us this weekend Pleasure. and glad to welcome you to St. Aidan's tomorrow morning where you'll be the guest preacher at our 8 o'clock and 10.30 masses. And we're just excited to, to have you here and have a chat today about your own journey, about faith, about faith in the public square, which is what we do here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so let's get to it. Let's well, hope the conversation does get too heated. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. thank you. Perfect. Dun -dun -dun. <laughs> He's been hanging out with kids <laughs> at camp. Dun -dun -dun. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get to um, the, the talk of the town this last week in the Anglican Church. Ah. Um, the, uh, the motion to change the canon um, to allow same-sex marriages um, uh, failed in the House of Bishops. This has been the talk over the last week or so. There's been a lot of a lot of angst and a lot of things going on in, in our church across the country over this, and bishops speaking out and some giving approval as we move forward. And um, I just want to get your take on things, Michael. I know you wrote a great article in the Globe and Mail recently. I'd refer people to too. But your take on that in the last week and what you saw and, and thoughts around that. Well, I mean, I'm speaking as a middle-aged white straight man, so <laughs> obviously, I you know I have absolute expertise in this area. Well, I've heard otherwise yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard otherwise on Twitter. Um, you get accused yeah, of yeah. all kinds of things on Twitter. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that later. The, uh, <laughs> um, look, this has to be addressed in a Christian context. So the society in, in the West has moved forward enormously. I remember when I was a, I'm 60 now, when I was a kid, I mean, being gay was something that people kept hidden. And it was only fairly recently that things have been transformed, and they have been. We have four children, and I've seen through the, the I mean, between 21 and 30, and, and you see it changing, getting more and more, even progressive is almost redundant. It's, it's, it's a non-issue. It's right. almost post-gay. Mm -hmm. They simply, they don't understand. It's like, like racism. I'm sorry, why is this an issue? They, they don't understand. And there is something, of course, jarring when the Armed Forces of Canada, an organization d designed to, to kill our enemies, is more progressive on the issue than many churches. <laughs> but let, let's remember here, um, the Roman Catholic Church, the largest church, this country is 44% Catholic. And it may well be that a very large number of clergy are gay. Uh, but the fact is the teaching of the, of the Catholic Church is extremely conservative. I would say often, um, well, damaging on this issue. Yeah. We have made enormous, I've only been in Anglican for five years, but we've made enormous progress. Now what happened recently was disappointing, particularly as a two-thirds majority is required, and if this was the case in the, in the secular world, we wouldn't have Brexit, oh, if only. <laughs> and, uh, but in the church, it's a two, and we had that two-thirds majority in, in, in two orders, but not in the House of Bishops, and I regret that terribly. But we have to empathize with those voices that dissent. And there are people who, there are people out there who are simply homophobic, right. they are hateful. Bigoted. But there are also yeah. people, and not necessarily older people, sometimes older people, but it could be because of a cultural formation, it could be because of a theological uh, basis. They have reservations about this. And what I don't want us in, in the Christian world to do is to resort to 
to, to malice and to write these people off. I mean, that, that's, I mean change is vital. It's the, the epicenter of being Christian. And we have to listen to them. I regret the decision very much, but what is wonderful is so many of dioceses, I think most of the major ones, have said, including my, my own Niagara, Bishop Susan Bell has been wonderful on this, we will, continue, we will marry same-sex couples. They are more than welcome. Business as usual. I am... I don't... Well, I was going to say I'm confident things will change. I don't know if, if, if things will change. Right. I, mean, I, I do believe, having just done an MDiv, I spent three years with people studying, that there is a, a new generation of fairly conservative people yeah. who probably will be ordained. Now, when I say conservative, I don't mean reactionary. No. I don't mean foolish. I mean, th th their theology might be slightly different. I don't know. But... It is what it is. Um, let's also get this in proportion, and I'm sure people will be upset by what I'm going to say, but we live in a world where being gay, I've done a lot of work on this in the past five years, in Russia or the Caribbean, many parts, most parts of Africa, yeah, you, can. Uh, you can be beaten, killed, mm -hmm. imprisoned, uh, arrested, fired. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Look, we, we, we need to move forward, I believe. I believe that the, 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 the very center of the gospel is love. And, uh, and I write about this in the book. Jesus doesn't talk about the issue. I think if you really understand Paul, he's not talking about committed same-sex relationships. He's talking about the abuse of young boys. Um, and as brilliant as Paul is, and, and I study Paul every day, I don't think it has very much to say about the contemporary conversation about this issue. The Old Testament... Uh, Lesbians are never mentioned. Right. A handful of references, and they're in the context of other uh, ritual rulings, which again have no re relevance for the contemporary world. Uh, so, look, it's, it's going to be okay. But and uh, once again, I'm speaking as a, a straight man who's never had to face this sort of thing. It must be very painful. Well, I know it is. I know it has to be. A lot of gay people in the in the church, and and that. But they've remained. That they've gone through so much insult and persecution for so long. This is almost small in comparison to what's gone in the, on in the past. And the reaction of so many bishops has been marvelous. It has been so apologetic, so much contrition, so much embracing. It could have been far worse than this. So I, maybe I'm, I'm being an optimist here. Let's look on the positive of all this yeah. and let's move forward. Yeah, yeah uh, for me personally, I, I mean, we, we had a big event at the church on Sunday to sort of stand in solidarity with the LGBTQ2S plus community. And for, for us, and Rob and I were talking about this just yesterday, it's largely, for, for many people in my own church anyway, it's, it's what you said a little while ago, which is we, they've moved past it. Oh, yeah. And so what we wanted to affirm on Sunday was, this is not an issue for most of the churches across, certainly this diocese, certainly the city. Yeah. We'd have a hard time finding a place that would, that would refuse this now that the bishop has allowed it. Um, I mean, I think that we're celebrating the fact that, and, and a motion that passed earlier in the day on Friday, mm -hmm. which affirmed the right for, for bishops to interpret, passed by 85%, when we didn't right. have to get into these sort of splitting houses and separating bishops and clergy yeah. and, and, and lay people. We know that 85, 90% of the people are all on one, one side of this. Right. And, and to be sensitive to others is fair, uh, but at the same time, we can't be held hostage. Um, we have to be able to move on, you know? Y yes, I agree, but look, being sensitive, it's not just fair, it's essential. Yeah. We do have to understand. I spent a long time in that camp, and as I mentioned earlier, there are people who are motivated simply by malice, but there are many people who are not. Right. And we can't batter them. We mustn't as Christians. That's not what we do. No, I agree with we that. We must listen to them, empathize with them, communicate, share, and, and people are changed. Yeah. So uh, well, I certainly have been, and, and, and certainly me. So you know, it, it, it um, look, it, it happened. We move forward. What is going on in the evangelical world, in the Roman Catholic world, we're we're, we're light years ahead of that. Yeah. And um, it didn't look good. On the other hand, the reaction by the bishops did look good. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that there are a number of people in both evangelical and Catholic churches who are looking to us, and they're realizing that's quite impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. They actually are listening to other voices. Right, right. And yeah. I, I'd written a letter to, I was away on vacation when the vote happened, so I wasn't in the parish. And I was getting some emails on it. When I got back, I wrote a, a letter to, to my parish just to give my thoughts about it. And what I'd said was that the, where I was that night was where most of the church was, in a place of some anger and frustration and sadness and shedding a tear for, 
for the voices that I heard in the floor synod um, crying, and that was a difficult place to be that first 24 hours. Mm, right. And that's where I was the Friday and through the weekend, and then as the days went on and the, and the dust settled a little bit on this, some clarity started to come out, and exactly what you're saying, the response, and what the church did in response to all that was what we need to be holding up and, and pointing to and saying, this is when we are at our best in the sense yeah. of, because this is going to happen once in a while, you know, we're going we're gonna, to uh, get, get at it and uh, people are going to get hurt, but our response to things and how we do that is, is the most important. And when you look at holistically everything else that went on in Synod, um, it was a, it was a, in the Church of Canada, it was a, it was a, a positive synod. synod. There were a lot of things that happened. Oh, that, we've got to, you know, you, you know goodness. Indigenous people. Yeah. Um, the, I wasn't there, but the, 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 uh, the vote on a response to the Jewish community, my, my father, my father's family were Russian Jews, and uh, I wasn't raised, I was raised in a very secular home, but that background, uh, and, and a number were in uh, Odessa, and they, they died during the Holocaust. The ones who survived were the ones who were in the Red Army, frankly. Yeah. Um, and I met one of them once. He, he fought all the way through to, to uh, Berlin. And, uh, but anyway, you know, we all have these areas of sensitivity, and they are still open wounds in many ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're the parts of the gospel that I, <laughs> you hear them read, and you have a certain background, and you cringe a little bit because the language seems harsh. Well, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, you understand what it's really about and who it's written by, and you know it doesn't mean that, but you know there are people who do interpret it in, in that way. So we have to be sensitive on so many levels and emphasize the positive achievements, but also be realistic about the negative ones. And right. that, that vote was a it was a great shame, and it, it, it was, I believe, a defeat and a retreat. But, um, look, I, I, I follow Jesus. I, I, I look, I, I, I know the end of the story. Right. That's right, yeah. And yeah. I'm looking forward yeah. in a positive way. Right, yeah, that's very good. Um, I, just a little bit about your own journey on this, I guess, not on this, but in general. Um, having lived, as you said, you know, you've lived in that world in terms of the, uh, equal marriage issue. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, you really lived in a more conservative world in oh, yeah. your uh, Roman Catholic Church and the, and the books that you wrote and so on. As I said, referencing coming to, to London the last time in Byron. Um, you've made quite a journey and now you've studied the, or you become an Anglican, you've studied the Masters in Divinity, you've engaged very progressively on a number of issues. I know that you've received incredible <laughs> feedback, both uh, probably from the people who've been on the what they believe to be, what, what is the progressive or left side of things on, on all of these things. I'm sure you've heard incredible things from people who are on the right about your own change in, in, in uh, at least the perceived change in your theology and the mm. things that, that you've had to say. I wonder if you can share a little bit with those who are listening to us what it's like. Um, you know, I, I, how does it feel in the sense that at times there are those who, who have longed for you to be more an ally, and now that you are, there are yet those who sort of question whether or not, you know, this is sincere or that it's a, a real oh, thing. Oh, that isn't really an issue. I've probably come across a handful in yeah. five years. Um, no, that, I mean, hey, look, there are people who just, um, they're, they're about righteousness rather than being right. Right. They just want to feel superior. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I might sound dismissive, but I have no time for that. Uh, we, have, we have battles to fight, you know, right. so I can't be. No, uh, it's been about five and a half years now. And at the beginning, there was an absolutely understandable suspicion. I right. was amazed by how many people. Fair. Oh, yeah, I, I would have been the same. What stunned me was how many people were just, what, what was so vibrant in, uh, in their praise for me. Right. Uh, because, you know, why is this happening? Uh, five and a half years later, if there's anyone who still has a problem, sorry, mate. Yeah. I, I, I ain't <laughs> got time for that, yeah. all right? And no, no, I mean, really, seriously, I, mean, I really haven't. I mean, it's a bourgeois conceit. Um, sure. You know, sometimes my working class origins come out. If that is your bag, fine, you live there, but I, I really haven't got time. Because, okay, if I'm gonna be candid, and I don't say this very often, I lost 85% probably of my income. Right. Uh, my family were trolled. Right. Uh, the accusations the about- said, If I can interrupt, the things yeah. that have been said about your children, like, well, you know, they're, they're totally ridiculous and off base. Uh, yeah, I mean, they don't really care. I mean, the, the, the main accusation about the kids, about four children, is that they were gay. Well, yeah. if you know young people, to them it was, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they really couldn't care less. <laughs> like it's a right. pejorative. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're, they're all boringly straight. Yeah. But it just, it wasn't an issue for them. And 
that didn't matter, but you know, their, their Facebook pages were trolled, and, and uh, my wife was told to leave me. She got two letters as a Catholic. She's still a Catholic. Yeah. I'm still married, 32, 32 years. Congratulations. And uh, um, you have to leave him. because there, there were two things. It, I left the Roman Catholic Church. My views on sexuality changed radically, and it was a process, and I was having, I was in, I was in a state of crisis, actually. I either had to lose my faith. My reinterpretation of my faith was, was gradual, was that it was completely embracing of gay people. I'm not going to go through the initials, I, the, the, you know, the, the, the initialization is too long. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and yep. um, I couldn't reconcile this with the teaching of the church. Let me say, by the way, there are many Roman Catholics who have a far more progressive interpretation than I do, mm. than, than I did at the time. So that you know, I'm not here to, to be anti-Catholic, God forbid. Um, but that led me to I thought I could stay in the Catholic Church with those views, and many Catholics said, "Please do," but I couldn't. I couldn't do it. For me, it was living a lie. I yeah. couldn't do it, so I had to leave. So it was two things. It was it was changing my views on that issue. Other views have changed since then, but it was that. It was it was all on the issue of equal marriage and, and so on. And it was leaving the Roman Catholic Church. Right. So those two things combined. So in a the, in the, in the very short space of time, and it wasn't just career. I, I'm, you know, we own our house. I, we have savings. I, right. My wife and I both come from fairly humble backgrounds. But I, I'd, I'd been fairly successful. So it wasn't I was impoverished, but everything just went. I was fired from four columns, TV show, radio show, every speaking event. I was speaking every two weeks. Everyone was canceled. Everything was gone. But also my persona of who I was. Right. Uh, all my book sales. I mean, my I wrote a book called Why Catholics Are Right. It sold forty thousand copies. Wow. I would give an arm to sell that many copies <laughs> of anything. Forty thousand. Forty thousand is a huge yeah. amount in a in a Canadian. Oh no, that's yeah. international. I know, yeah. but um, still, like Epiphany sold less than three. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, I shouldn't have had the epiphany. <laughs> but, you know, it was an expensive epiphany. It was, but I, I still have people even now, well, he, he did this for the money. I mean, I know I look stupid, but give me a break. <laughs> if I was doing it for the money, anyway, but it, it was persona, identity, career, um, friends, not all friends, many were lovely, but some of them just, you know, writing me off. It was, it was very, very difficult. Indeed, not friends, time. really. Well, no, exactly, but some were yeah. lovely. Yeah. Some, there were people who said, Michael, I don't agree with you, but you're my friend and I love you, and I still have... Um, and the, the, I mean, the, the, the hatred and the malice, and it, I mean, it's really, if there are people still discovering this five and a half years later, where have you been? That's right. Yeah. What, have, have you read anything that Michael's yeah, read in the last five and a half years? They still come out with some of the usual stuff. But no, the, um, the gay Christian community in particular, I mean, it's moved me. They, look, before I announced all this, I was working sort of behind the scenes with a number of people in Canada and Britain, gay Christians. Yeah. Because I... I I requested, I said, could I meet with people? And they set up this meeting. I don't want to give names here. Some yeah. of them you would know. And it, it was so moving. It was so deeply moving. And, and, and everything began to change. But I mean, I, I, I sort of, I knew what would happen. But it's difficult. I mean, I, I couldn't live a lie. I wasn't lying in the past, but I, I'd come to this new realization. I remember six months before Sun News went under, and they were very good employers. They, they really were. Whatever you think of the station, they were good employers, very kind. And I was called into the boss, and he said, "You know, things you're saying about the gay community and marriage is confusing our because we have a very conservative audience. They're confused." And he had a right to question me because they were paying me, and he didn't say, "Don't say it," but he said, "Could you be a bit careful because, you know, or, or don't talk about the issue because I was having guests on the show who were who supported equal marriage." Um, and I remember I had this little rainbow flag <laughs> on my desk. Remember, I'm, I'm sitting a few feet away from people like Faith Goldie and Ezra Levant. Ezra Levant, so, um, Brian Lilly. And, uh, well, Brian was in, uh, he wasn't there, I think he was in, you know, but anyway, it was, you know, it, it took time. And, um, and it, what I'd like to emphasize is this. This was profoundly Christian. People said, what did it, why did it happen? It was a product of a Christian conversion. I, I became a Christian back in the, in the mid 80s. And I've never, I've, or I've remained a Christian ever since. I mean, I've wandered around a bit within Christendom, certainly, but I've never denied. Um, it was a product of a, of a deeper faith. And again, I don't want to sound critical of those who disagree with me, but my faith grew to such an extent, my prayer life developed to such an extent, I had to come to this position. It wasn't in spite of, it was because, because of. of. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the, Jesus was speaking to me in a way I had not really known before, and I had to move into this. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm an Orthodox Christian. 
I say the creed, I believe it. I, I'm, I'm not, I have very little time for the relativism of, well, maybe, maybe, no, I believe. I absolutely believe. Because of that belief, I've come to this position. Right. Wow. And, and this is maybe um, a couple of notes that I made in your book that I, I did very much enjoy, Michael, and, 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 and certainly would recommend, um, that you did talk a little bit about um, this, this dynamic between um, you know, faith and homosexuality, and, and you were working out a new narrative mm -hmm. for yourself, right? Um, and that's really what it's about in that, in that crisis point, isn't it? Um, yeah. So what did you discover in that narrative? Of you, as you, you, where do you start when you, when you have to you know, create a brand new narrative for yourself? Well, I, I tell you what, um, I think, I, I mean, I don't think I'm very interesting, but I think this aspect is, is of some interest. The, the theology came later. Mm -hmm. um, it was a couple of incidents in my life where I, could, I was surprised by the, the, the malice of people who opposed um, equal marriage and so on. And I began to move. And then I asked some people in the gay community if I could spend time with them. And then some people in Britain, gay Christians, who always been very lovely to me. I was I, writing to them and speaking to them. And, and so I, I felt viscerally this change, emotionally, spiritually, viscerally this change. Then I sought to justify it theologically. Okay. So it was then a rereading of scripture. And it seemed as though suddenly I had different glasses on. Yeah. Then I, was, I read books by various people like Richard Coles and Jeffrey John and, and, and many others and the different interpretation to try and support. Because there's a problem here. If scripture is absolute, that equal marriage is unacceptable, you're in a bit of a, a pickle. I mean, it's a problem. Uh, but it isn't. I, I would never argue that scripture is absolutely supportive of equal marriage. I think it is because I think that the essence of it is love. And I don't think it's an issue. It's just simply a, a, a non-issue. Uh, but it was a theology, if you like, that came later. And, and then it just all unfolded. And uh, all of the attacks and, and the people who were very angry with me, if only they'd known, if they'd been nice to me, maybe they would have got me back. They, they wouldn't. But, <laughs> but you know, the, the, the hatred, because I, I thought to myself, good Lord, what a fool you've been. I've always thought of myself as being pretty worldly. Mm -hmm. um, if this is what I'm getting, imagine what yeah. it's like to be gay. Yeah. Imagine yeah. Yeah. how those people feel. There's a, a woman called Vicky Beeching, who I urge you to have on. <clears throat> She's in the UK. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful yeah, woman. Um, and her story of what happened to her when she came out as being gay and her career was just destroyed and, and, and the pain and the, and the attacks. And so Christian I, singer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, all of the, the, the nastiness and the, and the attacks on me, you know, he's gay, <laughs> cute children are gay, he's had a breakdown, he's a thief, he's a liar, he's doing it for the money, his wife has left him. Mm. Uh, this week I've learned you're a wolf in sheep's clothing, you're an apostate, you're a heretic. I quite like the wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> it's, it's quite butch, isn't it? Um, yeah. it to each one, by the way, I sent a note back, thank you for reminding me, would you like a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope you can come tonight. <laughs> Tickets for only 15 bucks. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I really have to say though, uh, within you know, those people on, you know, in progressive circles in the gay community who say, oh, I don't know about that. I haven't heard anything like that in years. At yeah, the no, this stuff I got this week was all people on the far right saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's generally, I mean, and there are people who simply, you know, they, they, I think they have a martyr syndrome. They, they don't want anything positive to happen. I, I'm in awe of, of the way people, um, well, I mean, Stephen Fry, for example, who, He's not a Christian, he's an atheist. No, yeah. But I mean, I can't. What an incredible person. Oh, and I, the kindness of that man yeah. and the support. Uh, but by no, not anti Christian. I mean, I can, no. you know, we, we had dinner when he was in Niagara, and I can tell you, I mean, he's very supportive of, of me and my journey and my hope to be ordained, who knows. Um, but he's not anti Christian. He rather, I, I can't speak for him, but I think he has a great affection for the Church of England that he grew up with. Mm -hmm. What is difficult for him, he doesn't quite understand, is it, the harshness that's developed right. in the past two generations, which yeah. has surprised many of us. But there were so many people who, who rallied around and were so forgiving. Right. Perhaps more forgiving than I could have been. Yeah. Let me change gears a little bit, um, just because we've focused a lot on sort of the um, uh, issues around marriage equality, but other things. I mean, obviously, one of the things that we've taken great pains over the last year of this uh, building up this this podcast is to focus on faith in the public square, faith in public witness. Mm -hmm. um, just your reflection on some other things that are happening right now. Um, 
as it relates to the bill that's been passed in Quebec, for instance, around yeah. uh, religious symbols, um, sort of the rise in populism in terms of, uh, you know, Donald Trump, Doug Ford, others who tend to want to sort of be pejorative when it comes to minorities, um, particularly as it relates to religion somehow, oddly, um, or not oddly, but, uh, mm. but um, you know, I, I know that we've had a couple guests on who've talked about leading up to the legislation change in, in uh, Quebec um, that, that find it that particularly troubling, particularly given that now we've got a, a premier in there who's prepared to use this notwithstanding clause to actually, you know, um, advance this, this cause, which is really, I think, a backwards thing. That's just my opinion. But I wonder, you've, you've been on the uh, front end of a lot of uh, issues over the last couple of decades in this country and have been very vocal about a lot of things. I wonder if you might, and you've written about this, I've read your pieces about this as well. I read a piece of McLean's, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if you can share with folks your own feelings about that particular shift in... in well, I, I mean, I, I don't think we should be euphemistic about it. it, it it's Islamophobia. It's yeah, about it's Islam. Xenophobia, um, Islamophobia, yeah. Well, it will include Sikhs and Orthodox Jewish people but that's not what it's about. Yes. I mean, it, it, this is not a government saying, you know, if, if we go after Orthodox Jews or Sikhs, that'll be a vote winner. No, it won't. No. Nobody can, couldn't care less. It's about Islam. Yeah. And that's what it's always about with these people. And I think it's dreadful. Look, the separation of church and state, which is, which is extremely French, uh, as, and in France, you know, this, I mean, Germany had the Kulturkampf, but the French also had, had this. And, um, and Quebec, I understand that in terms of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the, of the power it had. But no, this is about Islam. Uh, it is immoral, uh, it's anti-diversity, it plays into the hands of extremists within the Muslim world, mm -hmm. who are a small minority, sure. but now they will say, you see, emboldened, you, emboldened yeah, by this. You, you thought you could live in the non-Muslim world, you can't, they hate you. So it plays into the hands, and, um, but I think we have to be very uh, honest and observant here. Many people think it's terrific. And it's not just in Quebec. I mean, Quebec, the surveys, I mentioned this in the column, in the claims, yes, there's more of an issue there, but this will be replicated in Ontario and Alberta and elsewhere. There well, are people I, who... I fear it'll be replicated in the upcoming federal election in the fall. I think it might. And, uh, I mean, Andrew Scheer, well, well, we'll see what happens with that. But I, I look, there, there is... When John Tory wanted to bring in uh, funding mm -hmm. for failed schools, mm -hmm. I know what was happening on the doorstep. Yeah. I mean, John Tory is a very decent man. And, and maybe there's a certain de a degree of naivety about that, but I, certainly right. decency. But people weren't saying, you're really going to fund Christian reform schools? No. You're really going to fund Jewish <laughs> yeah. schools? Yeah. That was never heard. It, the right. only thing that was heard was, you're going to fund oh, Muslim, Muslim schools. Muslim schools. schools. And, yeah. that's, and if we're going to work out a relationship with the, the, the Islamic diaspora in, in the West, and we are doing it, we have to embrace. We, we have to reach out. And, and it, it's... Uh, but in populism, and, and here's another aspect of this, that I'm afraid there are right-wing conservative Christians who embrace that populism. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, not only in the, mainly in the United States, but also oh, yeah. in this country. I hear from a lot of them uh, on, on social media. They, you know, they'll have a Christian flag or whatever. And, you know, I love Jesus and Donald Trump and Doug Ford and this yeah. and that. And Jesus yeah. sent both those guys, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read that on Twitter, yeah. too. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the state, I mean, the America, I mean, it's, what goes on down there is, is, is radically different. But they do have this belief that he's like a, a Constantine figure. He is, okay, he may, maybe he's a flawed man. Yeah, he really is. Uh, but, but he is providing a Supreme Court justices that, that will vote no to abortion. You know, he's this and he's that. So they will turn a, 81% of white evangelicals voted for him. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing. Family values people, the, the, yeah. the Dobson's people. The oh, I mean, the, the, the Christian right in the US, the way Jerry Falwell and Franklin Graham. But remember, there, there is a, uh, a Christian, there's an evangelical church that's not right wing. The Church of Tony Campolo and Sojourners yes. Magazine yes. and so yeah. many others and, and yeah. Episcopalians. Jim Wallace. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Shane Claymore, yeah, Red Letter Christians. They just don't have as loud a voice no. as those who... And, and the same applies here, too. I mean, we... Okay, I'm in, in no way a spokesperson, uh, not at all, but let's not pretend we've done a great job of presenting right. authentic, progressive Christianity Fair. in the public square because... We haven't. No, that's right. I mean, and that's, I think, a lot of what we've tried to sort of elevate here is that, mm -hmm. you know, how do we get this conversation? Like, I've been impressed with Pete Buttigieg, yeah, who's, yeah. who's tried to make the case 
that if you're going to be authentic in a Christian faith, then you have to be alarmed by what's going on in America right, right. now. Yeah. Um, and I think that the voices, like in, in, in to see columns in McLean's and, and, and Globe and Mail and so on, that you're writing, which are advancing a different uh, representation uh, than what we hear. I mean, the right has been very loud. And we have to ask ourselves, how is it that we've allowed, that we've surrendered the, the uh, faith in the public realm mm -hmm. to the religious right? Well, can, I, can I tell you something? What is interesting, past five years, and it took a while because there was that hiatus when people said, well, what's really going on here? But let's right. say the past three to four years, Toronto Star, God bless them, the star were the first ones to, to welcome To reach out to you, yeah. 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 But Toronto Star, Globe and Mail, McLean's, Walrus, Now Magazine, High Politics. Pieces in the Walrus, by the way, fantastic. Oh, thanks. But they've all welcomed me writing about, I don't even want to say progressive, because I think that's really redundant phrasing, but Fair. I think genuine Christianity. Yes. Mm. They haven't said, oh, no one's in, because they know people are. I mean, the, the Globe and Mail issue, uh, the government, uh, last week, um, the editor said to me the other day, he said, my golly, the traction on this online has been I bet you in block a lot of incredible. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, I mean, p people are interested. Right. They, they, they do want to hear about, I mean, whenever I, you know, I write columns, particularly at Easter and Christmas, but when I write columns about, specifically about faith, I'm inundated with tweets and emails and people saying, is that really what Christianity teaches? Right. Right. They right. want to know. What they've been hearing up to now is, we're against abortion, we don't like gay people, yeah. youth, we don't, we're against euthanasia, pornography, blah, 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 blah. blah. But that's, not, that's not what the gospel yeah, is about. part of it, uh, you mentioned at the beginning of our podcast, is that the younger generation, this isn't a thing for them in, in a lot of these different avenues that we're talking about, but because they're not connected perhaps to institutional yeah. religion, that these types of things aren't being, uh, it's not being brought to them or they're not hearing it. Right, because they're, they're not, not connected in that way. Yeah, uh, and uh, they, you know, look, we've got to be careful in what we say here because it's not that young people are, are they're so searching. You know, you hear yeah. evangelicals say people are searching. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just searching to how to pay the rent and having yeah. a good time. I don't think they really are searching. But there are a number of people out there, younger people, who are they're open to discussion. I've seen this right. with friends of my kids. Yes. It's not that they say, hey, Mr. Corrin, tell us about Jesus. If yeah. they did, I say, get out. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, the language is so, no, but they, they say, hey, so you're studying divinity. What's that, What's yeah. that about? Yeah. So they, right. They're not rejecting it. It doesn't mean they're gonna, you know, hey, I wanna be a Christian, right. but they're not rejecting it. This, we resemble not the 1950s. We, we resemble the first century. Right. We have to reevaluate. Thanks be to God. Right? Yeah. Well, I heard. I heard Michael Curry, the Episcopal Bishop of yeah. uh, the United States, um, presiding bishop, presiding bishop, say it's not that the fact that people are rejecting the church, they're ignoring the church. Yeah. And that's a completely different thing. Yeah. And that's, when the church does what it's supposed to do, right. they're all ears. So yeah. and they're connected and watching, especially our our, our young our people. Our younger people. When the church doesn't, they're completely ignoring it and saying that's not. So what's very interesting to me is like in this past couple of weeks or past week and a half or whatever since the whole decision or lack of decision or however you want to describe the situation in the church and the fact that we had a bit of a response at St. Aidan's and it was covered on media and so on. What's been interesting to me is the conversations I've had. Some of you will be surprised to know that I frequent pubs in this city. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what's been surprising to me is the, the conversations I've had. Yeah. People are not on in, disinterested in this. They do have an opinion of it. They do. They absolutely do. Yeah. And when I walk in and I say to they say, I know who you are. And I've been, you know, we have our 55 hours for hope that, we're, that I've spoken of before. Mm -hmm. And when I walk into a local business and I have a conversation about that and getting support for it, and they look at me and they say, uh, oh, I know who you are. You're the guy who was on the news this week and you were talking about equal marriage. And, and I think, okay, well, what am I going to get? And, I'm exp and I'm exp I think we're programmed to expect anger about, mm -hmm. you know, but what I've gotten overwhelmingly is, thank you for taking a stand. Yeah. Thank you for, you know. There is the, real interest. There, 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 there is. People want to be engaged, but we've, we've not done the work. Well, we, let's not beat ourselves up too much. I mean, we've tried. We don't have the resources of the evangelical world. And, and, and when we Fair, say, but, but, but only part, I mean, the evangelical world is also divided now. There are a lot of younger evangelicals who've grown up with gay people. They all were, we all grew up with gay people, but we didn't know because right, they, they yeah, were yeah, in the closet. No, yeah, now they're yeah. out and they grew up with them, unless they go to Christian schools or, or whatever, or homeschooled, and, and they're friends and they, they don't. So there are stages. I've seen this in some of the more progressive evangelical churches. The first stage is to say no to equal marriage. The second stage is we don't talk about it. 
And the third stage is to say, we support it. But once you do, Tony Campolo in the US, Steve Chalk in the UK, once you do, there'll be repercussions. Yes. And even to a limited extent, me. Uh, things will stop. You'll lose jobs. Uh, you'll be attacked. Right. Funding, and that's a big one for a lot of these people, yeah. funding disappears. Yes. Yeah. And you, that, that, that is an issue. And I don't know if you, oh, six years ago when um, World Vision USA yeah. said that if you are in a same-sex relationship, you're welcome to work for us, which was clearly a response to people who were, yes. just to say to them, you are welcome. Yeah. They weren't putting an advertisement no. saying, we want to hire everybody. They were just gay. addressing reality, and within yeah. hours, not 24, within a few hours, most of the evangelical world has said, if you do this, we're withdrawing funding, yeah. which in effect meant if you are embracing of gay couples working for you, kids in Africa will die. Yeah. That's... In fact, I didn't mention it specifically. That was one of the things that I went home. I didn't sleep the whole night. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, how can I be in any way associated with the world that would react that way? Right. 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 That, that, and, and that's an issue because if you're a relief agency, and you think, I'm gonna, we're going to lose millions and millions of dollars and we can't do our work. It's easy to say, do the right thing. Well, yeah, but also, how do you help people? Right. right. Nothing. Right. So, you, you know, I know that you're limited uh, right now in terms of, uh, just in terms of people who don't understand the process. Michael has done his Master's in Divinity. He's been in a postulancy process. He's discerning a call to ministry. Yeah. That may materialize. Um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Let's, <laughs> let's leave that to the Holy Spirit. But uh, should in the future you uh, find yourself ordained, hopefully in the very near future, I pray that that's the case, um, how do you see yourself? I mean, I know you're going to continue to have a very public face in terms of this business of faith in the public square. How do you see yourself being able to continue to, how can you use, uh, use is not the right word. How is it that you can, uh, with authenticity, uh, live a ministry? And quite frankly, this doesn't depend on ordination, but how mm. can you live mm. this ministry, particularly if it's as a priest? How can you live this ministry in such a way now that the very public profile that you have can raise this conversation that we're talking about, can actually elevate uh, us to a place where we can actually broaden the conversation to be able to have more people like the Pete Buttigieg's of the world who are willing to yeah. say, hold on a second, there's a, there, there's a narrative out here which is, and it's not a progressive narrative, as you said, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you issued that corrective. I mean, I use language all the time which fails. Yeah, it's, 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 em, uh, trying to emphasize uh, categories and they're terrible. But, but that notion of what the narrative of Jesus is, I just wonder what your hopes, what your, your, your I mean, it sounds rather dreamy to say hopes and dreams and aspirations, <laughs> but, but this sort of notion, you're, you know, hopefully going to be ordained soon. For me, that's an exciting proposition. I, I, and I pray for you in the midst of that. Both Rob and I, I know we, 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 we pray for you as you make this journey, but I, I wonder how it is that you see being able to live that call in such a way to be able to be present perhaps to a local community, but but more than that, because you have a national voice to be able to speak with authenticity for where we are as a church. Well, at my age, if I wake up in the morning, I... I, I feel <laughs> it, 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 hey, it's a bonus. Hey, it's a dreamy so, day. Or, it's a dreamy day. <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, the, uh, look, the, the, there are different things going on here. Uh, I've spent the uh, last three years, a, a fair bit of it, on attachment to churches. And yeah, I'll preach, but most of what I do, and I'm sure it's the same for you... I sit with people alone in hospital beds yes. and try and comfort them and mainly just listen to them. Yes. Um, I, I move chairs from one place to another when we're, where we're getting a dinner together for people who can't always find food. Um, I try to be there when people are going through terrible emotional or, or physical pain. Um, so a lot of this, and of course the sacramental aspect of it, Critical, and, and, and yeah. prayer. So, that's really what it's about. I agree. Um, if there is something that spills over, I mean, if they are foolish enough to ordain me, who knows? But well, I mean, if that happened, happened <laughs> there are issues where I wouldn't be speaking uh, in any way as a priest. I mean, often I'll, I'll, I'll be on CBC talking. I mean, if I'm talking about, I don't know, SNC Lavalin or something, right. <laughs> really, there, there's not actually a Christian point here to, to be made. But there will be moral issues that I hope I can, I can, I can speak about. And maybe, maybe, I mean, people, if, they, if it happens and they, they know I'm ordained, maybe they'll have a different view. Because we have been a bit timid. That's it. That's and what I'm getting at, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we have to be careful not to alienate 
because there are all sorts of people in the church. But the, the, the roaring message, the great song, and it's lyrical, of Jesus in the Gospels is change, justice, forgiveness, turning the world upside down, making it anew, making it good. Um, let's not be frightened of that. Yeah. And is that controversial? Yeah, it's really it's radical. Really it's radical. Good, yeah. yeah. And you know, look where it got them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, if I can, in a very small way at least, speak to that and have a certain voice. And I have them the past few years, the past five years I have had. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know that newspapers, God bless them, they will say, you know, can you write us a column for Easter? Can you write us a column for Christmas? Fair, yeah. And, and I do. And I, yeah, I think in a small way it, it does make a difference. And, and, you know, look, yeah, all the hatred and stuff, but what really matters is the love. And, yes. and, and the people, and it's not me, it's the platform I've had. It's people who've said to me, I've come back to church. Yes. Or I've, I'm really thinking about this now. Mm -hmm. Or even, I, I'm not angry. I don't hate Christians the way right. I use. You know, there are, you speak to any defense attorney. How many people do you get off? That's not the issue. He did six months. He, did, he would have done three years without me. I mean, that, that's what, it, you know, it, it's, the victories can be relatively small. And you plant seeds, too. That's right. In people. So this will all unwrap, unravel, and develop as it goes along. I have been surprised to a miraculous degree so many times in the past few years. I don't think I really have an idea what's going to happen in the next year or two. Mm, right, yeah. Wow, well, I just, I, I'm just grateful to you. I mean, I'm very grateful to you for spending time with the two of us. Uh, well, Rob, is, Rob so. is a radio professional from years ago, <laughs> but I'm not. And, <laughs> and uh, you are a radio professional. You've done a lot of broadcasting, yeah. Michael, and to take time with myself and Ian and, and Rob crazy. here... Yeah. Um, we're no, we're a little rough around the edges, but but we're trying to get a positive message out, and having you here today to do that has been helpful. All right, we appreciate Anytime. that. Appreciate Anytime. that, Michael, and we do wish you the best. And echo Kevin, I uh, know you're in our prayers as you head toward a uh, new vocation, perhaps, and and time in the church and ordained ministry. You'll, Let's you'll, see. We'll you'll see. You'll be an asset. Fingers crossed. Right. right. <laughs> Michael Corrin's uh, latest book is called Epiphany, A Christian's Change of Heart and Mind Over Same-Sex Marriage. Look for another one. Can I ask the question about that? What is yeah. the next book? What is the next book? The next book comes out in October, and it's called, uh, what's it called? Reclaiming Faith. Okay. Um, but it's... What it is, it's a collection of my writings on Christianity of the past five years. Okay. So all of the sort of seven or eight different publications that I write for on a regular basis, I put together 80-odd percent of what I've written about faith and Christianity, and uh, so that's being produced. And I think that will probably be the, the, um, the book I'm, I'm proudest of, because nice. there's some work that I, I really do hold dear to me, and so that'll be out in... Uh, so, I mean, it's not new, it's a, a new introduction, you know, mm -hmm. but it's um, a collection. Good. Wonderful. We'll look forward to that. Great. All right, Ian, thanks for uh, heading out into the city. Thanks. Coming out of camp. Yeah. Coming out of camp. And, camp uh, Kimoki. Camp Kimoki. And you're heading back, and we wish you the best the rest of the summer. So hopefully we'll be able to get together again before the summer ends. Yeah. All right. Hope so. Good. Enjoy. Kevin, I'll uh, be seeing you. We see each on. other yeah. too much, almost. Too much. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes too much. I'm sick of you. Right. You sick of me? Uh, not yet. Okay, no, well, I'm, okay, I'm not really but, sick you know. of you either, but I said that I said that in an attempt to be funny, and then <laughs> it just sounds cruel. <laughs> no, that's I'm sorry. No, I don't no. mean to be cruel. I'm just Take trying to be back. funny. I'm such an asshole. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've established that, that will be a good time to wind things up. You've been listening to the Vickers Crossing podcast, and again, thanks to Aleppo Restaurant at 666 Wonderland Road in London, one of our great sponsors and A. Miller George Funeral Home on Rideout Street in London as well for being part of it. And until we get together again next time, Kevin, remember, always look both ways. Before you cross the street. Thank you for listening. Our hosts are Kevin George and Rob Henderson. Our producer and composer is myself, Ian, with original artwork done by Catherine Olenek. If you have any questions and want to know where to find us, tweet us at Vickers Crossing or find us on Facebook at The Vickers Crossing. If you have any questions about anything heard on this podcast, leave us a comment or look in the description to find out more. Thanks!